All right, we're recording. It is April 19. We've got lots on, well, April 18 or 19, depending on your time zone. Uh, we've got lots uh, going on today. Uh, for consistency, actually, I'll, I'll change this to 18, but I, I recognize that plenty of people are joining this from April 19. Um, anyways, uh, happy, happy Monday or Tuesday, depending on where you are. Uh, as always, uh, there are, uh, I think, one or two names I don't recognize here. So if so, uh, welcome to Gateway API meeting. Uh, if you have any questions, if uh, you're new to this, uh, this is just like any other uh, Kubernetes style meeting. The agenda is wide open. Uh, you can uh, ask any question anytime or add something to the agenda, drop something in chat, uh, whatever works for you. Uh, we are always happy for more uh, content and discussion. Uh, but with that, Mike, I think you had uh, first. Thank you, Mike, because you added some awesome content related to status. I know that's been one of the the big things left on our V1 beta one milestone, and I I think I read through two of your issues. There's a lot there, and I think this is related to them. So I'll hand it over to you to uh, maybe describe a bit more. Sure. So. Yeah, I think that this is linked from the link says bubble up, um, or maybe it's not. Um, yeah, in any case, I can add a link to the docs, but or to the issue. But yeah, there. When I was working through the reference policy implementation, I kind of discovered a handful of rough edges around status. Uh, yeah, number one 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 two is the link there, um, and tried to capture all of these rough edges or as many as I could in an issue so hopefully we can get some discussion going in terms of expectations across different implementations around reasons that are not currently specified that seem like they should exist or kind of gaps where it's under specified in terms of what the expected behavior is so yeah this is the issue thanks for uh, getting that open and then yeah the the other half uh is just kind of um that would love a final set of eyes on the reference policy conformance tests um, that I've been working on. I think those are in a state where they at least implement a like minimum understood and agreed upon uh, set of checks for checking the ref not permitted state on the route conditions. Um, and then there's a few to do's left in there for parts that are under specified and need more discussion. Uh, but I hope that we can merge without blocking on solving all of those now. That's a lot. Uh, let's start. Let's go back and start with reference policy. I know I have a PR, uh, sorry, a review in progress on this one. I, I have, I think, two nits so far. I will probably find something else maybe, but I think this is really close. I agree with your your sentiment that this is basically good enough to get in and a huge improvement and a huge addition to our conformance test suite. So yeah, thanks, thanks for getting this in. Um, I don't know if anyone else is also looking at this or wants to review it before we get it in. Um, if not, uh, I'll, I'll try and get that review finished today, but th thanks again for uh, all the work on this one. This is a, a massive PR. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like it scope creeped a little, but it kind of lays some of the foundation for things that we'll need, like uh, opt-in and opt-out flags for future conformance test stuff. So kind of excited about yeah. that. Yeah, and if I'm remembering correctly, this is blocked on a smaller PR now. Uh, you, so you added another PR. I pulled it out separately in case that's easier to discuss and merge separately, but it's also just folded into the larger one. No, I, <laughs> that's good actually. So I, I started reviewing your reference policy PR. I saw a condition change. Well, you know, this, it would be nice if you pull these out to another PR. I understand why you didn't. And then I saw, oh, there's another PR for this. So thank you. You, you were a few steps ahead. Uh, I think I, did I get some, yeah, I got a, a little, a few comments on there earlier today. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I agree with these being separate PRs and I think this is awfully close to, to good too. 
Uh, my, my only suggestions here were that I don't think we need uh, to keep these in for backwards compat. Uh, and I, yeah, uh, some reorganization, but that's it. And I forgot to make this okay to test, so sorry. Uh, awesome. I'll try to get that wrapped up then. Cool. Well, I think the bigger thing, the bigger discussion point, and I don't fully, I, I think this is harder to summarize, is your issue, what was it, 1-1, one, one, there's a bunch, uh, 12, yes, this one. 12, yes. <laughs> so there, there's a lot going on in this issue, and we kind of just briefly highlighted it. Uh, but there, or no, maybe I'm confusing this with one of your other issues where you basically made, yes, this is the one. This is, you're basically describing a set of eight or so changes that you'd like to happen to status, right? Um, so this, this seems yep. significant. Um, and I'd like, maybe you can summarize, uh, I think this is a good summary, but uh, what I guess maybe yeah. what you, think, uh, you would like to do next with this. Um. Uh, so this is stuff that I feel like I would like to see uh, some sort of consensus around like consistency, consistifying some of these terms, kind of like reducing things that are one-offs that are logically equivalent to other terms that we're using, um, hopefully before we go to a V1 beta one. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that kind of like throws a wrench into some of the current plans there, but um, yeah, some of it, the, the bottom one or two or three, the bottom like, yeah, the second to last, oh, just in the bullet points there, are done in the route condition reason uh, PR, I believe. So the accepted and ready, uh, yeah. The ones that are route condition reason, I think are, are done in uh, that other PR. But there's a few other things like switching detached to attached to be um, more consistent with how we're using not the like inverse terminology for most other cases. Um, and then just around like invalid versus invalid parameters, um, swapping pending and waiting, just pick one of the terms rather than having two things that sound roughly similar. Yeah, th those all make sense. Uh, the one, are, so with detached, I'm trying to remember, do we, we already use detached, do we have attached anywhere or is this just a straight reading <sighs> of existing? <laughs> Attached exists as a reason. Uh, for the, the detached false case, it is expected to have reason attached, which I think is just oh, this is logically the, confusing. Rob or some anyone else here, did we fully like make it consistent after that discussion with the API conventions? No, the so bottom? the yeah, so we did so there was a large discussion around this. I think James had led that discussion. Uh, there was no clear preference of positive or negative polarity. Uh, and so we, we ended up with conditions that were of both just based on a, a rather arbitrary uh, what's, what feels more natural. Uh, I think one of the ones that we had the most difficulty switching to a positive polarity was, or a healthy, you know, state polarity was conflicted, uh, you know, had, and, and I think you even mentioned that here that uh, you recommend, or in one of the other issues that you recommended leaving conflicted as is, because it's kind of hard to come up with an equivalent. Uh, yeah. But I think if I'm reading the other suggestions here correctly, uh, you're suggesting moving to a positive polarity, like, attached instead of detached uh, in a number of these other cases. Um, is that correct? I, I think switching a detached to attached is the only one that's actually like flipping in uh, a significant change of the logic. The others are just consistently using terms with the meaning preserved. Yeah, that makes sense. 
And I, I think the other thing that we may not have clarified anywhere in our docs right now, but my uh, understanding and expectation was that for the negative polarity conditions, such as conflicted, they would only be present if they were true. So the lack of conflicted as a condition meant that there were no conflicts, not conflicted, false. But I, but maybe I'm mis misremembering that. Um, I don't know, someone else with more context. I think, yeah, I have to go. I think they're, they both have the same meaning, isn't it? That the fact it didn't exist means it's false. Right. Right. So, so I, like, there's no point in putting an error condition, you know, a negative polarity condition in place if, if it's false. Um, you can, though. Okay, sure. Harry, I, I can't. I think. I think okay, yeah, I, I think. Uh, if the condition doesn't exist, I think it is, it tra translates to unknown rather than false. I'm not sure right. the, the, the upstream guidance is really not intuitive at all. It's like the whole opposite of what you would expect. So that's, that's where we landed last time where even if it is like detached is false on a gateway only confuses users, but you, we have to encourage them based on API guidelines. Yeah, I just mostly look at pod status. So pod status is like, is my disk full false? Is the is the like your disk is happy condition? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So in that case, we we can have them all present all the time. Um, that, 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 that is kind of tangential to what you're proposing here. I, I, I kind of went off on a sidebar that I, I don't think you had intended, Mike, but um, yeah. So you you have three different issues. The other one is, I, I'm just trying to make sense of the differences here. I tried to read through them. Yes, this is the other the, one about this polarity. One, yeah, this one just tries to specifically narrow in on that uh, polarity inversion uh, case for the listeners, for um, the detached uh, status. The other one is more of just a broad superset of um, things that are uh, of trying to like have one tracking issue for all potential change, changes for consistency. Yeah, Rob, the, I'm looking at this and this one brings to mind like why not attached if we, was this just a, something left over from the make everything negative well no we never had to make everything negative i honestly can't remember why we chose chose detached over attached i know J i know there was a doc that, and this goes back a long time but james wrote a doc that had negative and positive polarity for every condition that exists uh and we there was one meeting in particular where we just went through and picked one of those uh for each one and we, I think we must have just picked detached instead of attached. Maybe that was under the false assumption that it would only be present if it was negative, like if it was true. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I agree it feels out of place uh, or that attached would be a, an improvement over this. Cool, okay. Um, Good discussion. There's a there's a lot here. I'm just trying to figure out how we can move all this forward. This all relates to a uh, issue that is already in the V1 beta one milestone, which is Nick's kind of umbrella issue to that our status is wonky and we need to improve it. Uh, and you you took that a few steps further and actually highlighted, I think, most of the key places that it should and could be improved. Um, I think the appropriate, I, let me think about this. I think this one is not necessarily blocking, but probably could be in the milestone. This one having conditions except, you know, consistent across all feels like it should be in the milestone. 
And the final one, this also, I think, belongs in the milestone. Any, uh, any other thoughts on, like, Mike, if you were choosing, uh, which ones do you think should block uh, beta release? Weirdly enough, I think that the detached inversion thing doesn't have to block it because you can just keep that condition as optional or deprecated and add a new attached condition and you already have the reason for it. Um, the one that I, I would like is the larger one, the 112, um, which, yeah, oh, sorry, not 112, um, maybe it's 111. Uh, the one that has the tracking, like the use of pending versus waiting and accepted versus attached, um, or, or yeah, getting rid of admitted and potentially adding like invalid or invalid parameters and just consistency around that. Yeah, I, I think I, these are some huge improvements you're proposing here. Um, any hesitation from anyone as far as putting this in the V1 beta one milestone? The only thing I'd say is, um, you know, Nick just went through and really rethought uh, statuses for the uh, uh, route inclusion uh, gap. And uh, I don't know if, if any of this would conflict with what he's proposing there or, or uh, is different from that. That's my only my only caution. Um, uh, since he's just gone through and mentally gone through the exercise of figuring out um, how things needed to change uh, uh, with statuses, I hate to, to change them right now and, and just need to revamp them again. So that was that would be my only uh, 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 consideration or, or uh, caution, I would guess. That's a really good point. I agree with that. I, at first glance, I think these are compatible with the changes Nick has proposed, but I want to make sure that we're not creating extra work for either side, right? <laughs> make sure that we're by adding this, we're not uh, slowing down uh, delegation inclusion work either. Um, so yeah, let's let's make sure uh, this is compatible with uh, what's all, what's been you know proposed right now for inclusion. I do want to point out that renaming and kind of this kind of factoring is probably the easiest at this point in time. And then it's only going to get more difficult. Yeah, I I think the you know fundamentally the more users we have, uh, the more implementations we have. Any rename that comes after this, you know, the later a rename exists, the more painful it becomes. Uh, so I'd agree with that comment. I think what Mike mentioned as a as an option of technically we can leave a condition in place, consider it deprecated, and add a new one is compatible and it works, but it just you know, the longer we wait to do it is more painful. That's all. Um, so I it sounds like on. there are no, there's not any hesitation to adding this to the milestone. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> all right, uh, I'll add this one to V1 beta one. Uh, Mike, do you think, the other one I was thinking of is the 112, the uh, clarification of invalid backend refs. And I think you already have a, is this the one you already have a PR that solves? Or am I missing? I, I, I absolutely do not solve all of it. Um, the, the uh, what's it called? Conformance tests for reference policy touch some of this, particularly the unpermitted section, but there's kind of like open-ended questions um, around how, like, like what happens for partially valid, partially invalid routes? I think that's something that definitely needs um, consensus amongst multiple implementations because right now it's really unclear.
and particularly for the life cycle thing of like if one or more of these objects change while a gateway is ser actively serving traffic what's the like least damaging thing we can do i think this is this should be defined in that the way kubernetes usually works is it just keeps floating around but i'm not certain we wrote that down specifically because that's how RBAC works, as far as I know. Wait, to, to clarify, you're saying that if something is invalid, it just keeps on retrying indefinitely until it is, you know, until it ever becomes valid, or you mean something else? I meant, um, was that question for me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, rem I remember we discussed this with the security or someone about how RBAC works, like if you, someone mounted a, a volume or something and then the RBAC was like disappeared and it was like, well, they were permitted to do at that time. So then it just keeps going, but it wasn't, it's not like a very strict thing that is very well defined. Um, but that was how I understood that Kubernetes generally works, but, I, Again, we probably didn't write it down explicitly. Yeah, I, I think it depends on if you look at this as something like RBAC, which is allowing an event to occur at a point in time uh, versus uh, network policy, which is I, 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 the, the, the way I look at reference policy is somewhere between RBAC and network policy, uh, where network policy is something like that if you make it more restrictive is going to affect everything at that point. Or if a network policy that allowed a set of traffic is removed uh, and you can, you, I see real parallels with that in reference policy. So my preference would be to take it, to treat it more like network policy, but that's a lot more work. Um, and that's true. It's like, do we want or no? I guess you can't take it back. Like, can we make a decision now that's very explicit that doesn't restrict us in the future? Or is it just like a kind of have to make an explicit choice now? Or if we let some freedom in this, then it's kind of end up with a result that you can't take back. I think one other bit in our API, like one, one of the guidelines we've had in our API development here is that uh, you want a controller to be able to restart, look at the state of the world, and be able to, as close as possible, build an accurate, accurate representation that mirrors what it had you know, before it restarted, basically. And so if, for instance, you were, to, you were looking at reference policy as a point in time at a point in time this reference was allowed and then controller restarts and it loses that knowledge for some reason uh that could be surprising as opposed to if we had a more network policy like interpretation of reference policy oh you're talking about like active connections because sure. there's yeah it's it's hard though because we don't, there's no like official place where we put that state. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I, so that's what I'm saying. It, I, I guess this is also a little tangential, but that's, I guess we're, we're not, we're not actually trying to graduate reference policy as part of beta, as part of this beta. So it, it, we, we have a bit more time in how we define that, but my my preference would be to treat it more similar to network policy than to our back. Uh, and this not not that you, you need to drop every you know every request the second every connection the second that changes, but just that uh, if it does change, you make the corresponding control plane, plane change as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, I think that one probably makes the most sense because changing a, a reference policy could conceivably be equivalent to that user just deleting all the stuff that you were referencing. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Uh, okay. There's a lot. There's a lot in this issue as well. I'm not as certain uh, about where this belongs. Are there parts of this that feel like they need to be completed before uh, V1 beta one? Mike, you're probably most familiar with the the content here. Yeah. So I, I think like there's there's two kind of like ignoring for a second the like individual use cases. I think there's kind of two big buckets of like what happens when initially applying a route and like is it accepted by a gateway or rejected? And is there some kind of partial acceptance? So like if one backend is valid and one backend is invalid, what does the gateway do with it? Um, and, and then there's also the kind of life cycle question, which is the later on, if a thing changes, whether that be a backend service, uh, a reference policy, a route, whatever it may be, how is that change reconciled? Um, is the route ever unaccepted? Uh, does traffic just start 503 for only the invalid backend? Um, or kind of like what happens. So those are kind of like the two large cases. And I'm uncertain on it needing to block beta, but definitely something that I would like <laughs> to figure out what, what's the intent here. <laughs> I kind of get some agreement on that. You know, yeah, like I think this is, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, <clears throat> you know, we did address this kind of scenario right in the in route inclusion. Uh, uh, gap, we made a, distinct, a distinction between attached and bound, um, being that an attachment is basically the fact that you've, you know, you've got a, like a parent ref from a route to a gateway or from a route to a route in that regard, um, as versus a bound or, or binding, which means it's actually, you know, actively uh, functioning, <laughs> so if you will. So you could reject, you know, a, a change that, uh, that is, isn't valid um, and continue to operate, you know, or continue to have that uh, relationship uh, exist, but not, you know, actively uh, part of the, the runtime configuration. So I think it's pretty, pretty closely related to, to this. Not saying that the way we specified it in, in the GEP is the right way to do it, but, you know, it is addressed there. And it, something that we probably need to talk about in, in this con in this context as well. Yeah, I was gonna say that this might be an area where we have we can let implementations have a bit of leeway. Because I know some implementations will are mostly operating from like no state. Like they'll just look at the config that exists. So if you have anything that require them to do something clever, like know that there was a previous valid thing and then they like made it slightly invalid and then what to do there. We might not require it, but we might allow you to, to have an implementation that is able to handle that for just to make, like if you want to do it, to make it easier for your users, but not necessarily require it as part of the spec. Anybody's implementation that's like that probably wants to go look at the uh, route inclusion gap and, and make comments then, <laughs> because it does not uh, take that uh, model into account. It, it assumes that the uh, controller understands the the distinction between uh, the configure a configured uh, configuration and a um, uh, the uh, you know the the operational configuration, if you will. To clarify, I think you're describing a, what you're describing, it seems very similar to what Nick and others had proposed in uh, the issue I linked further down, but it was uh, basically the idea of uh, there, there's two states for a route. That one state is, uh, I've accepted, uh, let me, before I misspeak here, but one, one uh, reason is, one condition is a, attached, I believe. And the second condition is something like ready or programmed. And you're, you're saying a similar level of separation would exist for route inclusion, right? The first is, uh, this is something like that I understand as the implementation and I'm planning to do. 
Uh, and the second is I've sent the config to the control plane. And from my perspective, it's done. But there may be some other work happening for a few seconds. Yeah, you may be muted. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a little bit more than that. Um, uh, because you still have to be aware of, you know, if you don't have this concept of, of kind of an accepted running config and uh, yeah, <laughs> boy, yes, everybody go read the gift. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, you don't want like the entire uh, parent route completely not binding to a gateway if uh, one of the child routes causes a problem, um, especially if somebody like changes one of the child routes that is no longer compatible. You don't want it to then blow away all the rest of your infrastructure that's, go that's dependent on that parent route. So, uh, you know, you, you have to kind of maintain a, a, a distinction between, uh, you know, what people are, 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 have tried to configure <laughs> and, and what the system is actually configured uh, at the, you know, what it's actually programmed the data plane to do. So, and I, I see this as real, this issue is related to that. Um, so, yeah, so it does go, it does go back to what we were talking about, uh, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, yeah, that, that's a helpful distinction. Thanks. I think aside from like the, the ready status, it sounds like that's going to be potentially really difficult to implement accurately. Um, it's basically being able to communicate some sort of partially invalid error state, such as like accepted true, but still having resolved refs, refs false with a ref not permitted or uh, something or a invalid ref or something like that. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. Um, I'm just okay. So let me let me take a step back. Uh, let's go to uh, Mike. You're you're. I think you you really hit on some of our most important things remaining for V1 Beta One, right? Uh, and that is, uh, and and it's kind of been looming for for a minute. Is if you look at our our V1 Beta One milestone, we have a lot of clean up things, documentation, we need to make the webhook deploy better. Uh, and then we have this one API change, whatever, of this This is the, our last remaining API thing and it's clean up our status. Uh, and you have defined everything very well. Do you feel like you have everything you need to move forward? Do, do, like maybe it does a gap uh, seem like the right step for this or I, do you feel like you have enough information to, to work on something like that? Um, I think the biggest thing that I really need blocking this is input from other implementations. Like, I think I've tried to capture our experience and kind of like the rough edges that we found, but I really want to hear from other implementations of if they agree with these, if they have uh, specific proposals for addressing some of them that, that may differ from mine, uh, anything like that. And, and if a gap's the right format for that, then um, I can clean this up and put it into that. But I think it is. I mean, I think the fastest way to go is to turn this into a gap and you know, then have people comment directly on the gap. And if you know, people don't comment and everybody else is in agreement, then that's where we go. It gets us there fastest. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I. I only represent, you know, the implementation I'm, I'm most familiar with, uh, so I, I can only provide one perspective, but I'm very interested in what other, others think as well. I, you know, historically, we've let individual new reasons come in without a gap because it's just, you know, a small uh, addition. Because this represents or the, these series of issues seem to be a broader series of changes, a gap probably is the easiest way to represent those changes. Um, so if yeah, if if you're if you have the time, I'd love to see a get for this. And also, I've been talking a lot on this call, but if any other implementation implementers want to speak up and either agree or disagree with any of these these suggestions, I'm very interested too.
maybe to, to call some people out, <laughs> Harry or uh, maybe Lewin, I do, do uh, have you run into either of these uh, kinds of issues? Is she on the call? Yeah, uh, I'm on the call. Sorry, I was a little distracted. Um, no, we haven't gone into any of these things yet. Uh, I've been away from the project for a little while, so I'm not really the right person to answer here. Yeah, can you mind just repeat the question again? I'm here. I was a little distracted. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries. Uh, thank you. Uh, so what we're just trying, uh, we, uh, Mike has uh, done great work here trying to uh, highlight some of the lack, some of the flaws in our status right now, uh, and he's proposed some changes. Uh, so, uh, for for example, uh, adding new reasons such as ref not permitted, uh, that would be I think most relevant for uh, to uh, in reference policy not permitting a cross namespace reference or these kinds of things. Uh, have you run into any other similar shortcomings where it's not clear what to put in status? No, not yet. Okay. But we haven't gone into the policy part yet. We're just doing a very basic uh, HTTP route and gateway, no reference policy at this point. So, okay, great. Yeah, that that's helpful. Um, actually, Nathan, were you about to say something? I was just gonna say, like, even for us, right? A lot of these things didn't come up until we started trying to write conformance tests, and you're like, oh, what should this look like? And either like you made an assumption when you were doing the implementation, or you just didn't think about this edge case. So it's likely that other implementers just haven't run into it yet. And that's the same, yeah, same kind of thing. We, we heard feedback in reviews, the conformance test stuff from other implementations, like, oh, we actually implemented this differently because we made a different assumption. Uh, so just trying to get some of that stuff clarified. That's great. Okay, well, thank you for uh, raising this discussion. Looking forward to a gap and is this, uh, yeah. Is this something we're trying to do for V1 beta one? Like I don't- I think I added, oh, I guess I didn't add this specific one too. So I think we need some improvements to status. Uh, we need to, at, at, at a minimum, uh, make sure our conditions and reasons are consistent across types. I think that's probably the most important thing in this list. Uh, and then the way I understand uh, 112, if I can uh, get there, uh, is that this is really just trying to expand uh, our reasons so they're a little bit more descriptive. This would be helpful for beta one, but I don't think it's absolutely required. Reasons are something we can add. Yeah, I would uh, agree. This seems more tied to the reference policy stuff, which itself is not in beta, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I think a lot of this one is more advisory and clarifying some documentation. I don't know that there's like specific breaking potential code changes uh, from this issue. Cool. That makes sense. Okay, well, thanks a bunch. I know I've spent a lot of time on this, uh, but thank you uh, for uh, the great write-ups on all of these and good discussion. Um, all right, uh, let's move on. Nathan, you've got the next one. Um... Yeah, um, so I'm kind of basing this next set of conformance tests on what Mike's got going there. Um, but it's instead of uh, route to backend permissions, it is a uh, gateway to certificate permissions or secret. Um, and there was a distinction made in the docs that um, the route to backend ref was part of core, but it didn't mention that the gateway secret stuff is part of core. So is that intentional? I, my bet, I took a quick look at this before the meeting and as far as I can tell, no, I think this is an accidental omission. Um, I'm trying to remember the history of reference policy, but I'm wondering if it started with support for Backend ref. I think I think reference policy started with the ability to forward it to a different namespace, and that's when these docs came in. And then I think we at a later point 
added the ability for it to support uh, cross namespace uh, certificate or secret references, and it never made it to this doc. That's my rough recollection of the history here. Okay. Um, so a probably the best thing is just to fix the documentation. Okay. And then like sort of the, the driver behind me asking this was, do we want to, like, does it make sense to include both applications of reference policy in the same feature flag for conformance testing? Or does it make sense to split them up? That's a good point. I think they're going to be the same. I can't imagine an implementation doing only one. I, I, like I, I can say maybe they just started with support for one and we'll do the other at a, at a later point. Yeah. But I don't, we, le we left some room open in API spec that says you can, that there may be some implementations that have other means other than reference policy to make these references safely. Uh, right. I guess to clarify, it's just a feature flag versus is it an individual test case? Because they should be two individual test cases. Yeah, there's like... And that's less of a big deal whether or not, it, like when you run it, you have like one flag and then later on we need two, so we just break it up. Yeah, there's like, there ends up being like six separate test cases across all the different applications of reference policy. Um, but it's, do we want to guard all six tests behind the one flag that Mike's adding or does it make sense to split them off? And it probably makes sense to just put them behind the same. And if we wind up wanting to break it up, then that's not a huge deal. Yeah, that, that's my preference. Sweet. Much easier discussion. Cool. Well, yeah, thanks for uh, taking those on. I, I'm always happy to see more conformance tests coming in. Um, cool. I, uh, okay, so next one is for me, or next few are for me, uh, KubeCon. I don't know if anyone, anyone on this call planning on being at KubeCon EU this year, month from now? All I'm right. ask when, so I'm guessing no. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, so it may just be, uh, Nick and I, I know some people had asked in Slack as well, so it seems like some others will be there too. Uh, we're planning on, uh, or hoping to, uh, do some meetups either at uh, Contributor Summit or just after the Gateway Talk. Um, if you know anyone who will be there and who might be interested, uh, definitely uh, link them to our Slack uh, and wherever else. But always, always happy to meet people and happy to get back to KubeCon in person. So maybe we'll see more people at KubeCon in Detroit later this year. Who knows? Um, cool. I, I just added this, this really should just be under the issue triage, but I just wanted to make sure this didn't get missed. This has been through a few rounds of re review right now. It's just kind of uh, gotten lost, I think. So if anyone is able, I think any org member can do this, but 1066, I think I've resolved all the final uh, comments on this. Oh. Rob, I'll take a look. Okay. Um, I'm assuming. I see like a bunch of comments already resolved, so. Yeah, okay, uh, cool. Thanks, well, that's that's great. Uh, next, we'll move on to PR and issue triage. A lot of the new issues that came in were related to status. I went through and I can uh, remove the stale life site or committed to doing this. I think I added this to the uh, milestone. Um, Let's see what else is new this, this time. I have a, a new PR that fixes this issue. Uh, let, me, let me just highlight that real quickly. This is one that I added to the milestone as well because, or I think should be added to the milestone. Um, this is so tiny. Uh, James made the very good point and it just kind of got lost that uh, we have this requirement that a parent ref if it's invalid, it needs to have status set. But the whole idea of a parent ref is if it's invalid, how do you know who should implement it? You know, like who's the parent if you... So anyway, th this just removes that and hopefully makes it a little bit clearer. Uh, good I think... point. Yeah. So, or, sorry, what was that? I just said that's a good point. Oh yeah, yeah. So 
Um, this was a funny one, but uh, thanks to Jeff for finding, sorry, James for finding this one out. Uh, cool. Um, those are the main issues. So I've been out for a few days, so I'm just trying to get, uh, get back into things, but those are the main ones I saw come through in the past few days. If there are any issues I missed, please let me know. As always, like I, I try and leave this open as a bullet point list in case anyone just wants to drop something like on here that is needing some attention. Uh, there were some bigger PRs that came through this week. Uh, one of the big ones right up at the top is uh, Richard's. Uh, Richard, are you on this? Not a, yeah, you yep, cool. I'm here. Cool. Uh, so I think you're just actually implementing the gRPC route gap. Yeah. Right. Um, this is great. Um, this this is really just verbatim from the gap, adding the types and then gener generating based on that, right? Yep. Cool. Thanks for taking this on. I do caution that we are probably going to be focused mostly on getting the beta. So yeah, yeah from a enough. group's bandwidth perspective. Yeah, that's uh, you, that. You mean like in terms of reviews or what do you mean? Yeah, just in yeah, terms yeah. Of so just just a... okay, understood. Yeah, I, I think this is so. Don't there, there is a chance that this will just sit for a while. I I hope to get to it, but I've been trying to in my mind triage things that are specifically part of that V one beta one milestone. That's like earlier in the meeting, I was trying to determine okay, what what issues belong in V one beta one, and you know, just trying to make sure that we can actually get this release out the door. Um, and everything else is just kind of underneath that list in terms of prioritization. But this, I, I'm hoping will be fairly straightforward since we've discussed most things in the gap. Uh, I just- it, Yeah, yeah, just, I'm just saying like, if you don't see activity on it, it doesn't mean that people don't think this is important. <laughs> yeah, okay. well said, well said. Uh, and, and I'd say it's a similar thing for this gap, which is also uh, huge and well-written, but uh, it is not uh, blocking V1 beta one. Uh, so again, encourage anyone who has extra time to, uh, to go through this one. But uh, if you see things in the milestone, which is the uh, V1 beta one milestone, those are the ones that we're really trying to make sure we prioritize in the next few weeks, um, next couple of weeks, really. Uh, a lot of those have open PRs. Uh, if not, a lot of them have uh, people assigned. Um, yeah, that, that is what at least I've been really trying to focus on in my reviews. Cool, let's see, Are, were there any other one? Yes, I really wanted to discuss this one more broadly. Uh, this, I think, led to some confusion. I started to type up some comments on this and I got more confused. And so maybe, I think I misunderstood the use case or I'm not understanding the use case fully in this. Uh, Mike, when you're, when, you're run, when you're running tests, I think what you're describing is not only do you want the base resources to stick around afterwards, you want all the resources from the test, all the test cases that have run to stick around afterwards. Is that correct? Oh yeah, this is something, feel free to close if it doesn't make sense. Uh, it was just something that was helping me debug uh, when clean up flag wasn't behaving in the way that I had initially expected it to. Um, kind of reflecting on it, I think it's probably just a misunderstanding on my part. Uh, so unless other folks want this behavior, feel free to close it. I ran well, into this. Like so I've, I've definitely been one who has modified, modified tests in a similar way when I've been running conformance tests. So I understand this use case, uh, but I wanted to clarify when you were modifying. So when I was doing it, it was when I was running a very specific test, I wanted those resources to stay around afterwards. What I think is really dangerous is if we let all resources stay around indefinitely, because basically, these conformance tests are written in a way that they, they all operate in their own little bubble and are likely not very happy if, you know, weird things happen if you have another conformance test running without the previous ones being cleaned up. 
uh, and then your parent refs, instead of having two parent refs, you have three or four or whatever it is, you know, and then the tests are brittle enough that they just say, well, I expected two. I don't know why there's four now. Um, so that, that was the thing that scared me about this. Uh, but I wanted to understand if that was actually the use case you had to, or if you were running the full suite. The same use case, running okay. a single test, trying to debug failures. Okay. I, uh, I actually ran into the same bit of confusion. So I would appreciate like, if we could at least just add a comment or something that's like, here's what's happening and why. Because I think between Mike and I, we probably wasted a reasonable chunk of time figuring out. That, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it seems like we really need, and, and I think someone suggested this in the thread down here somewhere, but it seems like we really have two different feature requests. We have the one thing that is supported but not documented well of uh, let the base resources stick around uh, after test run. Uh, and that is currently communicated with the cleanup flag, which is maybe probably not the best term for that. And then the, the second item is I have a specific test I want to run and I just want to leave those resources around so I can look at them after the fact. And I would be very open to a PR that at, at the very least uh, clean, you know, describes that first flag better and or adds a second flag to do what you're describing here, which I think is I think what you what this PR does right now is it merges the purpose of those two flags together, uh, where I think we want we still want the other flag to exist, the base resource thing. Uh, you know, so the reason for some for some implementations like GKE where it can take minutes for gateways to spin up, uh, and then seconds for other things to happen. Uh, it's very helpful to just say those base resources, I just want them to stick around across runs. Uh, and then the other thing- You might want, want to rename this flag. I, I agree. I, I agree, yeah. So it seems like two things, uh, rename flag and second, optionally add a new flag that does the full cleanup of- and, Yeah, I and, think the- the flag we should add, like the, I want to keep stuff around because I need to debug the test. That That is very, very useful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Mike, do you have time to take this or to follow up with this one? Probably not at the moment, but uh, I can close it with the <laughs> explanation of what we decided are the path forward for anybody else. Looks like there's a few other folks interested in this issue who may be able to pick it up. Cool. Well, I see a few others have commented on this. So if if anyone else, uh, it seems like this is plenty of people are interested. So if anyone else does have time, uh, I'd love to get this one in or a variation of this in. Cool. All right. I think that's everything that I wanted to highlight in today's meeting, but so let me know. Am I am I missing anything? Anything else we should discuss today? I had a quick question. I just kind of like I don't know if I should bother raising this as an issue or not. So, um, you know, we've we've said that uh, that uh, gateways only are influenced by the gateway class settings on creation, and that changes to the gateway class after that will do not affect gateways. Um, I, I totally get the understanding that, you know, why we did that. But what about the situation where as an admin, uh, you know, who owns the gateway class, I do want to force a change. Um, you know, we, we don't really have a, a, a way of doing that in this spec. Um, uh, you will have to recreate. So I think uh, I'm trying to remember if we actually wrote this down. So it, there was some discussion where it's like, well, maybe this should be up to the implementation to allow, if you wanted to basically have like a class option change propagate that you could, if your implementation can support it, but that we don't necessarily exclude people from not propagating it. I think we have some explicit thing here. 
it's just a recommendation. It's not like a must. And then if you were in the situation where it doesn't get propagated, at least in my mind, the way to redo everything would be, be to de delete and recreate. Yeah, I think I think there were two two principles here. One is uh, fundamentally limiting that blast radius, right? Of one change to gateway class affects all these gateways, you know, potentially all your production production traffic across n load balancers, whatever it is, right? Uh, the other thing is that at least for some impl implementations, uh, this change can represent that you know new infrastructure needs to be spun up to make this change. And so you, you basically need to do this kind of rolling upgrade. This, so it, it is almost easier and safer to represent by creating a new gateway and deleting the other one because that's what's happening be, behind the scenes. Uh, this is just a recommendation in the spec right now uh, with this kind of you know exception, whatever that I highlighted here that you can choose to propagate gateway class changes, but that needs to be very clearly documented by your implementation. I can see that making sense for you know low risk changes that don't require a new gateway to be provisioned, something like that. Um, yeah. I mean, it seems almost like we need a um, a way to to tell a gateway to re-reconcile itself in a sense. <laughs> And, and you know reread the configs and and see if there's been changes and uh, uh, and implement them. I guess uh, the question would be, if you delete and recreate, it should do that uh, because you can look at the UUID to know that that resource has basically disappeared. The question would that. be if you intend for the change to also be not disruptive and then right and then it's like it's kind of complicated right? yeah because if you've got like multiple instances of the same gateway then you uh um you might want to trigger re-reconcile but on an instance by instance basis uh, kind of a, a rolling upgrade in a sense sorry nate i think that I, would I, fit that would fit the delete and recreate on an individual gateway basis it's more complicated if if you didn't want delete because that would basically disrupt traffic during the reconfigure that's that that's the case i'm thinking of that that workflow can't handle yeah that's that's one of the problems we're facing go ahead nate yeah that's that's kind of the thing we're looking at so for like extra context part of our config is like what image should be used for the gateway and so when we want to release a new tag of that image and bump our gateways even if it would otherwise not disrupt traffic um we've like delete and create is doesn't seem like ideal ux okay so in the overtime that we have i think you guys should file an issue because this sounds okay. like it's worth tracking yeah 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 it, it okay. feels like there's a way to accomplish that i don't know if that's a pattern that we build into api itself but it does feel like that's a that's solvable and yeah worth worth discussing on it on an issue okay Thanks. Cool. Great. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Bye. See ya.